you are unsure as to how to become a Flutter developer, then in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you guys an easy five-step process that you can apply to your Flutter learning journey that's going to take you from a noob-level Flutter developer to a junior-level Flutter developer. By the way, my name is Hussain Mustafa. I've been working with Flutter for over the past six years. I've helped countless clients and companies launch their Flutter projects onto the iOS and Android app store, and I've helped over 30,000 plus students learn the Flutter framework. So step one in our Flutter learning journey is going to be to learn the programming language that is used to make Flutter applications, and that is going to be the Dart programming language. So what you're going to be doing in this step is ensuring that you learn the fundamental concepts of the Dart programming language and make sure that you have a grasp over them. For this, an excellent resource that I recommend is going to be the website, which is called dart-tutorial.com. Here, you can go through a step-by-step -step process of learning how Dart programming language works, and it's going to give you a ton of examples of how the fundamental concepts of Dart work. So what I recommend you do is that you understand how to begin with variables work in Dart. How does control flow work in Dart? After that, you can proceed to working with functions. How do lists as well as collections work within Dart? How do you do file handling within Dart? How is object-oriented programming supported in Dart? And then finally, take a look at null safety as well as asynchronous programming. And once we have step one complete, then we're going to be moving to step two within our journey, which is going to be to install and set up our development environment. So for this step, the first thing that you're going to be doing is making sure that you can install the Flutter SDK onto your system. Once you have the SDK on your system, the next step is going to be to use this SDK and ensure that you have your development environment set up correctly. So set up your development environment. So this entails setting up Android Studio, Visual Studio Code. If you have a Mac, then Xcode, setting up your simulators, ensuring that you have the correct drivers installed on your system to connect physical devices to your system. So set up your development environment. And then once you have your development environment set up, then the next thing that we are going to be doing is ensuring that we can actually create a startup Flutter project, create a Flutter startup project using the CLI. And then you are going to be basically ensuring that you can run this startup Flutter project on a physical device as well as a simulator. So run your Flutter project on a simulator and physical device. And what this step is going to ensure is that you have your development environment set up correctly. You understand the basics of Android Studio, Xcode, how does your IDE work? How does the Flutter SDK work? How do you create a startup Flutter project? And then how do you run this project on your device? And how does this project then interact through the Flutter SDK with the code that you're writing, for example, to enable hot reload functionality or restarting your application and things like that. And why we're focusing on this step before we are actually delving into the basics of Flutter is because when you're learning those concepts, I don't want you to be confused with issues pertaining to the setup of your development environment. I want your development environment to be set up correctly so that when you're learning Flutter, you can only focus on those concepts and your Flutter development environment is working as intended. So once you have step two under your belt, then we're going to be moving to step number three, which is going to be to start learning the basics of Flutter. To learn the basics of Flutter, the first thing that I'm going to be recommending is that you basically take a look at how do widgets work in Flutter. And widgets are the fundamental building block of all Flutter applications. They are basically the atoms that come together to form a Flutter application. And once you have taken a look at them, then this concept of widgets is basically going to go ahead and build upon all of the other complicated topics that you're going to be learning. Once you have a basic understanding of widgets, then I want you to go ahead and take a look at how do layouts work within flutters, how do rows work, how do columns work, how does the align widget work, how does the center widget work, what are containers, what's padding, what's margin, all of those things like that. And once you have a good grasp over layouts, what I'm going to then recommend to you is take a look at how gesture detection works at Flutter. So how do we detect when a user is swiping, clicking, double tapping, light tapping, all sorts of things like that. And how can we call functions when certain events like these happens? When you're learning how to work with widgets as well as layouts and gestures, what I recommend is that you actually take a look at tutorials and not only invest your time in just learning how these widgets work. What I want you to do is get your hands dirty, get into the art of building an application, even though it doesn't have any logic just 
build the UI. Make sure that you understand how do layouts work, how do gestures work, how do widgets work. Try to tinker with the actual designs that you're learning to build from the actual teachers that you're learning to build. For example, I have on this YouTube channel a bunch of tutorials for how to build UIs using Flood. So they can be an excellent resource for you when you're trying to learn how to build UIs. And what you're basically going to do by learning widgets, layouts, and gestures is basically get an understanding of how to build UIs within Flutter without having any business logic associated with them. So once you've understand that, then what I'm going to do is that I'm going to give you an optional task that you can take a look at, or you can put it as something that you're going to be taking a look at later, which is how to work with animations within Flutter. There are ways of working with animation by using animated container, which is a very easy way, or you can use mixins, which can allow you to create custom animations, even though that is more of a high level concept. So I don't recommend that as of now. So once you've learned layout gestures and animation, then the next thing after this that I'm going to recommend is that you take a look at how do stateless and stateful widget works within Flutter and basically understand state within Flutter. And for now, what I want you to do is ensure that you understand how stateful and stateless widget works. What's the difference between a build function? What's the difference between an init state function? What are lifecycle loop functions? And what is a dispose function, let's just say, and how these functions work in the Flutter ecosystem and what they are used for. So I don't want you to take your time when you're learning these stateless and stateful widgets and take a look at other third party state management solutions that are out there for Flutter. There's going to be a time for that. But for now, I just want you to become a master how to work with stateless and stateful widgets within Flutter and try to build applications that manage some kind of a state solely by using stateless and stateful widgets. For those of you that are confused as to what state means, state basically means the data that we store within our application that basically changes throughout the life cycle of our application. For example, what is the input of a user within a certain text field or things like that. And once this is done, then the last thing that I want you to do from here is that you are going to be taking a look at how do you work with the material library within Flutter and the Cupertino library within Flutter. So these two libraries are pre-built UI components that we can use to compose our Flutter applications UI. And the material package, as the name suggests, uses the material design schema that Google has created to create its UI components. For example, buttons, text fields, and things like that. And for Cupertino, as the name suggests, is a design scheme that's been created with Apple. And the widgets that we get from the Cupertino package allows us to create our UI Flutter Flutter application that mimics the iOS design scheme. And that's pretty much it. And once you learn step three, then we're going to be moving on to step number four. So in step number four, what I want you to do is take a look at some of the state management solutions that are third party that are available for you. So for learning state management library, the choice is up to you. You can take a look at provider, you can take a look at block, or you can take a look at GetX. And I'll recommend that you try to just learn one and become a master in it instead of trying to learn all of them. Why? Because they are widely used and all of them have their pros and cons. And even if you choose just one of these, you are going to be set. And then once you've learned one of them, then it's going to be easier for you to pick another one. And once you've learned the state management library, then what I want you to do is create an app using this state management, state, ma state management library. And basically ensure that you understand how the state management library works. And while you're building this app, ensure that the app you create is semi-complicated. You don't need to create the next Facebook, but make sure that the app consists of a number of different screens. And these screens share some state in between them and they don't share some state in between them. So a good example of this could be, for example, building an application that helps a user track their BMI on a day-to-day -day basis. So one screen of the application could be the user being able to input their height and weight and other variations like that and then calculate your BMI and then all of the state for this screen is managed by for example let's just say provider but then on another screen you can have a list view which can show them all of the BMIs that they've calculated for themselves over a day by day basis and then this could help you kind of understand how the state management libraries work over a larger scale or a larger application without being restrained to just building one screen and the scope of your app being very limited. 
Once that is done, then the next thing after this I'll recommend is that you take a look at how to work with HTTP requests within Flutter and also take a look at how to work with a backend as a service such as Firebase or Supabase within Flutter. So you don't have to learn Firebase and Supabase or all of these different solutions. What I recommend is build an app that uses, let's just say, a state management library of your choice. Then after that, build another app that is going to allow you to work with HTTP requests using Flutter. For example, this could be an app that uses the CoinGecko API to get the current price of a specific cryptocurrency as well as some other data for that cryptocurrency and then show that. Or you can take this a step further and maybe use an API that allow users to log in and understand how JWT tokens work within Flutter, persist this information on the user's device so that they don't have to log into the application every time you just store the JWT and when the user opens the application, they're automatically logged in. And after this, another application that you can build could be, for example, an application that uses the real-time functionality as well as the storage functionality of Firebase or Supabase. So a good example would be, for example, creating a chat app. And then this is going to give you a solid bunch of projects that you've created using Flutter which you can show on your actual resume when you're applying for Flutter related jobs, whether they are full time or freelance gigs. Once you are good with step number four, then you are on your way to step number five, which is the final step, which is going to help you become a junior level developer. Here, what I'll recommend you do is that you take a look at how to develop web and desktop app using Flutter. So what I want you to do here is take all of your pre-existing knowledge that you have for Flutter and just try to build very basic web and desktop applications using Flutter and learn how to deploy them on the desktop as well as web and just ensure that you understand the basics of this. After this, the next thing that I want you to do is take a look at some of the most commonly used Flutter packages that are on pub.dev. So you can just go to pub.dev and take a look at some of the most commonly used packages. So as you can see, they are here and then try to pick up some of these and try to create an actual application using them. So let's just say that I understand that I want to create. So let's just say I really like the video player package. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to create an actual application using this package. So and what I want you to do is when you're developing all of these different applications is that once you've developed them, take a couple of screenshots of these and put them on your website. Say that I've built this project using Flutter and this is how it looks. And this is going to be sufficient enough for you when you actually apply for actual jobs to actually showcase to them your talent as a Flutter developer. It might be great if you can actually publish some of your apps to the iOS and Android Play Store or maybe the web, but I understand that may be something that some of you might not be able to do. So it might be better for you to just create a website, then create your projects and put screenshots of your project on the website so that people can see what package, what actual projects you've built using Flutter. And then the final thing that I want you to do once you've built some apps using these third-party packages from pub.dev is to create a resume that's tailored to being a Flutter developer. So what you're going to be doing in this resume is that you're going to be listing your experience as a developer, obviously. You're going to be listing your education as well, but your projects are going to be mainly focused towards Flutter development. And in your experience, you're also going to be highlighting your achievements more as a Flutter developer as opposed to like some other development that you might have done as well. What this is going to help you do is laser focus your resume for just roles that are specific to Flutter development. So what you're going to do here is make sure that you tailor your resume to Flutter. And then this is going to help you land those freelance cakes or full-time job that you're looking for. And then once you are done with step number five, then the last thing that I'll recommend you do is that you apply and that's it and apply a lot is what I like to say. So don't be discouraged if you apply to one place and you don't get a response. The magic to the application game is that you apply to a lot of places so that you increase the chances of you getting recognized and potentially being able to secure some resumes. And then I'm going to be giving you guys some bonus tips as step number six, which are not related to further development, but I think they are going to greatly help you in your search of becoming a software developer or being able to secure a nice job as a developer. And that is going to be to learn the fundamental concepts of programming languages and also take a look at data structures and algorithms. 
So I'm not going to get too much into what data structures and algorithms are, as well as what are the fundamental concepts of programming languages that you should know to ensure that you are a well-versed software developer. But if you're interested in learning about them, then feel free to leave a comment down below requesting a video on that, and I'll try my best to create a video on that. And that's pretty much it for today's video. I hope that this five-step approach is going to help you master the art of becoming a Flutter developer. And I can assure you, by the time you complete step number five, you can be confident in your abilities as a Flutter developer, and you are more than capable of acting as a junior Flutter developer. So with that said, I hope that you enjoyed today's video. As always, if you enjoyed the content, then please don't forget to leave a like on the video as well as subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to leave them down in the comments below, and I'll try my best to answer them for you. And as always, stay happy, stay healthy, keep learning, keep growing, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.